I call the order the February 8, 2017 Public Works Committee. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open it up for public comment. Yes. Um, as long as I'm here. <laughs> Uh, I, first of all, I want to thank you for your, uh, Jay, for your um, attention to the situation behind my house with the very low hanging um, power line. It's still there and it's still very low hanging. Uh, just to quickly give you an update, uh, as you know, Pico, the higher levels, excuse me, higher levels of Verizon seem to get involved in this and the, and the state and all of that. And um, Verizon sent out what appeared to be some contractors to clear the brush around the pole, but then about five minutes after they arrived, their truck broke down. So they spent the next two hours in front of my house waiting for a, a tow truck, <laughs> which eventually came and towed the truck away, and uh, long story short, uh, nothing happened. Uh, so I just want to let you know that uh, I'm still waiting. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I know that the, 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 in the email, someone from Verizon said that it is not a safety issue, and he seemed to be quite emphatic about that. But to me, it kind of sounded like famous last words, um, because it literally is, you can stand, it's, a, the, the, it's about this high. Yeah, I, I know. You, you so, and I, yeah, you've seen the pictures and all that. So, and, and it's affecting my neighbor as well. So, um, but if there's anything else, you can kind of turn up the heat a little bit. That would be, that'd be great. Thank you for bringing that. Yeah, question. sure. Okay. Um, anybody else? Public comment? <clears throat> Hearing none, I will move on to the Public Works Department. Uh, Jim is not with us this evening. He, uh, there's a lot going on <clears throat> surrounding the storm. So uh, Jim will be in later this evening uh, to cover the storm. Engineer's um, uh, <coughs> report. Um, turn it over to Cal from Penobie. Thank you. Uh, Council, you have a copy of my report for this month uh, before you. Uh, just a matter of a quick update over and beyond uh, the, uh, the report. Uh, the manager and I met with Montgomery County uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, the purpose of the meeting was to discuss uh, possible grant options and also uh, design options that the county has for the town. It was a very good meeting. Uh, we actually received a couple of uh, email updates from the county. Uh, it's uh, Sarah Richardson who's working on the project, and she has very good ideas. Uh, so we will be sharing it with council as the information comes in. Uh, it seems like the, uh, this was a great idea, and it is uh, on the right track. This is for the finance. And uh, I'm ready to answer any question the managers may have uh, for the this report. The only thing I would like to add is that Sarah, Sarah Richardson, yes. she is going to present before BZNR on Monday mm -hmm. night a plan and her ideas. I'm sorry. Oh, that's a great. plan and her ideas on the concept of the uh, of the welcome mm -hmm. uh, treatment. Treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's the County 2040 Implementation Grant, and we went to them with the original designs and it didn't meet a lot of the criteria or to get the extra points for different things like seating <coughs> area, uh, pedestrian type things that you get extra credit for when you're going for the grant. So they highly suggested changing the design to uh, something that is more pedestrian friendly and that fits into our plan. So, uh, we're going to see what they, they come up with. Cal had worked with her in Norristown, so they, they were familiar and they've been sharing <coughs> files and plans since that meeting. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just say we, um, we actually talked to Marley Weiss about some of those mm -hmm. um, additional areas that, that would be more helpful for, um, for the grant. Mm -hmm. We think that partnership would help with this, you know, upon this implementation grant. So. Yeah, I think it was a good idea. And <coughs> coming from 
meeting on Monday, George? Yes, she will. Marley's on vacation. But, uh, no, I meant yes. Sarah. Sarah Richards. Richards. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, right. Um, is, there, is this the right time to ask about um, Cheltenham requesting deposits for people who want to get um, EDUs granted, et cetera? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yes, sir, I do. You can really yeah, only get all the parts and we're adding clients and future. Okay. Well, you can, yeah, the dream you have an update is anything concerning news about this? It's a concern. There hasn't been any decisions made by Cheltenham. We voiced our. Um, that wasn't good for us. Mm -hmm. They're still looking for an agreement for every developer to go, not a developer, but even a person opening a store, as simple as changing the name of it, that they go to Cheltenham and enter into an agreement with them, with their third party engineer for $750 for them to review uh, what they call a waiver, uh, a postage waiver, which means they don't have to do any filing for sewer. Mm -hmm. There's no new use. And it's a pretty, uh, when it's something like that, it's pretty simple and it might be a half hour work maximum. Now, some of the things that are going on with that is not every municipality is being required to do that, uh, report their no new uses. What I've been doing, and there's been a couple of no new uses, I'm making a list of them. We, uh, starting this year on the, on the fee schedule, there's a $150 fee for EBU approval and our time that we write that up and then the time that they're going to take down in Cheltenham should be covered by $150. Yeah. So what we're looking to do, and we're going to have to compensate them for their time, but fairly. And if okay. we have a list of four or five stores that have changed names, we'll be able to submit them a list and they will bill us for it. But those five people will pay $750 and it should, for the new new flows that will cover now, when you start using more flow, if you're doing like a full-blown sewer module, then they want them to enter an agreement for $2,500. And it's a lot more work. It sounds like a lot of money. Um, I know we just had one review. Abington is working in the colony, and they needed to, to do a sewer review, and our engineer had to review it. And it was minimal time, over three hours. It was about three or four hours, yeah. Three or four hours that they spent on it. So it's way less than the twenty five hundred. We don't we don't receive many of those that are full blown models. The, the new house on two hundred six township line has to do it because it's considered a subdivision, and the brewery had to do it when they opened, but they're few and far between. So it's not as much of a concern for us. Yeah. And developers are more accustomed to setting up these agreements and escrows and getting their money back. And it's it's the uh, yeah, it's going to be shy for changing their name and being asked to put $750 on deposit over in Cheltenham that I'm concerned about, not the big developers. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that. When, when the only <coughs> a simple matter like this, I don't think it requires uh, such a, a steep fee. If you're changing the use, it's going to require additional flows and additional EDUs. Okay, now, yeah. this may be warranted. Not necessarily the amount, but the review is not. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with George. This should be looked at uh, closely and see what happens. Yeah. All right. Give us a bit. Okay. When we come back, I mean, after mm -hmm. we, we can talk to the solicitor and uh, the engineer and come up with a letter to <coughs> council to say <coughs> that we can help him. Yeah, I'd be great. the 2017 proposed paving project um, is uh, still on target. Rodman Avenue in the Vista. 
Bethesda, Washington Lane, and York Road to Greenwood Avenue. Um, so basically the same roads as last year at Gestures. Mr. Chairman, we, we also uh, want to put on there as an alternate shoemaker between Cedar and Leadham. It's a 300 foot section of road that's in really bad shape and Pico's running a gas main down so they'd be responsible for half the paving. Uh, it could be really inexpensive to do it and we went in there and patched it up this year to get through the winter, but it, it's in bad shape. So we would like to add that as an alternate just to get a price on it. Wow. Uh, if that's okay. Yeah, and that's good. I mean, that, and that in effect, Pico would be paying for half of that. They would pay for half of it, yes. Yeah. So it's 23 yeah. feet wide and 294 feet long, so they would pay for half of that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. So we'll, we'll keep that. <coughs> Third Aqua Water Main um, from Washington Lane, um, north from York Road, and Township Line Road from Washington Lane to Summit Avenue. They're going to be laying uh, or putting in new water mains along those roads. Um, so that's that's what's up. And, and in fact, we just found out, I think in the last couple of days, that Township Line is going to be. Um, it is a state road, it doesn't affect us. Um, did you have something? No, so, no you're correct. Uh, Aqua is in the process of obtaining a, a, an HOP from PennDOT. I'm uh, not sure if they got it yet, but they're in the process of getting it right now. So they need a permit from PennDOT. Okay, okay. so they're, Aqua's waiting on the permit yeah. to do that. Um, the, waiver of comp uh, the waiver of conflict regarding the LED for the mm -hmm. project, we actually discussed that in Borough Council. Bring that up again. Uh, moving on to old business, um, the Pico Gasoline Replacement Project, the uh, status update. Um, they are currently working on Cloverly. <coughs> Cloverly, once they're done at Cloverly, they will move on to Rodney. And that was the schedule. They were moving from Cloverly and then right to Rodney so that Rodney would be available to paint by August uh, of this year. So that's where we are with that. So it has begun. PA small water grant application um, has submitted uh, this grant to some background that we use to um, line all of our, <coughs> our, our sanitary sewer pipes um, that we videotape. Um, I've realized that they are in disrepair, so this grant would help to repair that. Um, and then we expect, we're expecting those announcements to come out next year. So it's a $480,000. Third, under old business, the traffic way to Greenwood Avenue and Washington Lane, um, the, the timing issue, um, that was brought up, I think, either in the last public works meeting or in the last couple of months that's come up. Um, PennDOT has gone out to look at that, and PennDOT has determined um, that, the, um, that it meets the permit requirements, that there's actually nothing wrong with the road light, but that doesn't help the Abington residents were being backed up all the way down Washington Lane. So Jenkintown is working with Abington to see how we can resolve that. Um, so that, that would be an ongoing, an ongoing thing. I think that the Friends School has even possibly offered um, part of their cutout as part of that resolution or the, the quarter, part of that quarter. Abington has reported success with talking with Friends about uh, improving that intersection of widening. So they, they had to go down for a meeting, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at filing a, a joint municipal grant. They look on very favorably. They are. And, um, that intersection has flooding problems, yeah. and um, so we would tie in some drainage to that coming off Vernon and New Bowl, and then tie into the Abington side. So it would be a joint project, mm -hmm. but they have issues too from the flooding. <laughs> Lake Washington. Lake Washington. <laughs> you, you know you're putting people out of business on the boat rentals. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's some problems underneath there too. There's some we have two broken sewer lines in that intersection that are going to be repaired next week. Okay. We, of the eight that you that we approved the work on, mm -hmm. we've completed five of them. Those two 
two will be the six and seven. The other's outside of the right of way, and it's going to take some discussions. But we're moving along really well. We've repaired Washington one to the west, the one out here on Reedham. The, the contractor and public works is working jointly on that. The Runnymede Avenue, Walnut Street traffic light repair. Um, they're setting up a, a meeting with the property owner um, due to the placement of the new pole because the new pole is going to be behind the sidewalk and the, the neighbor has some, some, I guess, some bushes or shrubs there. So we just want to reach out to the, to the residents to let them know what's going on so we can have, have a say in this new part of this meeting. The 2016 paving project, the required con concrete repair update, uh, we just we sent out eight notices. <coughs> There's um, eight people that are not in compliance at this moment, so we did send them out um, another notice and with the compliance date of uh, July of 2017. <coughs> we will be paving in August. Sheltenham proposed sanitary sewer construction, um, Interceptor A update. Interceptor A is, is the sewer, and it's inspected we did in the spring of 2017. And so more information to follow on that. Um, Sheltenham proposed sanitary sewer I and I reduction plan. Um, the DEP has accepted the approved plan. George, do you have any background on that approved plan? No. Well, we worked for two years on it with Abington and the DDP and Philadelphia and our state reps. And Abington, uh, Abington had videotaped their sewers and they were going to do spot repair with lining and grouting. And that's the, that's what we're doing. And Cheltenham had originally proposed to line all their sewers. They decided to videotape them and do the repairs the way we're doing them and Abby is doing them. And it's a lot less costly. And uh, the DEP has approved that. And the final piece of that puzzle is Philadelphia has to approve it. Okay. And they, they have uh, different interests than the DEP. And they're both governing Shelton Hill. Uh, they're more into not, they're fine with building a, a reserve tank that fills up and flows down when it's not full rather than the actual repairs in town. Uh, the DEP is more repair to infrastructure. So they were satisfied with the plan, and we don't have to have more meetings anymore. That's right, everything. They're just lining them They were originally going to align them all. Now they're going to videotape it, evaluate it, okay. and line the real bad places and grab the ones that can. Okay. Uh, thanks, George. <coughs> uh, the CDVG grant accessible curb cut ramps. Um, uh, that was a hundred and sixty thousand dollar grant that was received, um, and it's going to be used to replace our handicap ramp. Um, and the agreement is in the process of being executed, and the scope um, of the project um, is about 22 base and 10 alternates for a total of 32 grants. Um, I, I believe there's, um, there's an opportunity for, for another CDBG grant coming up. Yeah, I, actually there is a meeting that is coming up soon, the borough and other municipalities were invited to. Uh, this is for the next round, which will be in 2017. Okay. So the borough has the, the option of submitting for the next round of whatever the borough deems the project uh, is, is needed for, the, for this year. Can we get to that today for the Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, once the paperwork is finalized for the county. <coughs>
sure everybody in the room. Um, that's all I have, unless anybody has anything else. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? You'll never be that. Uh, no, who's next? No, I'm not on this. You. Oh, God. <laughs> That's me. <true. laughs> okay, I'm going to call the uh, public safety community in order. Open up the public comments. I don't see no. We will go to order of business. Reports, police department. Mr. Chairman, um, members of the board, my reports are in your packet. Um, I would like you to take particular note, and I'll discuss it later on the, on the agenda, um, of the uh, traffic study we did on your road. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, I'd be glad to answer from the reports you have in your packet. Are there any questions? So I have some about the traffic study, but we're going to talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Could you give a little overview of the, of the, of the study and the examples? Yes, um, Councilor, we, you know, we, we noted the concerns that the board and the citizens have for York Road and uh, the, the cars that are going too fast. And cars are right up against the curve. So we've been doing our own study, uh, the police department. We've been doing it um, more so at night because we, we know that during the day when the traffic is heavy, the speed is low. And at night, um, we've been counting the cars and um, getting a median speed. But I asked the engineer to come out and do a study as well. And he did. And that report is in your packet. And what he found was, oh, but the police department's enforcement of your approval in 2016 we just started 2017. But on York Road, the police department wrote 137 speeding tickets. And we only wrote 23 uh, traffic signal, uh, red light tickets. So um, the speed was noted more uh, at very late at night or very early in the morning. Not in the, not in the traffic. We have our speed trailer out there now. I told them I wanted the uh, speed trailer more in the center of the town where the people are more likely to walk as opposed to the beginning and the, end, uh, the entrance on either end of, of York Road. Really wasn't doing much of the job <coughs> down by Rydal and down by Washington. It was just this way. Um, we've had uh, speed lines painted on York Road in September. Um, the new traffic signs are posted um, adequately. So we're going to have a very aggressive enforcement on your road. And we'll announce that at some point. We're, we're gearing up for that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've directed all the squads to uh, pay attention to the York Road traffic during their 12-hour tour. But I don't want them hanging on York Road during their 12-hour tour. I want them in the neighborhood, just cruising the neighborhood. So that's what they're doing. Um, just, just very briefly, the engineer noted northbound traffic, and he did this um, uh, Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, northbound traffic travels an average of 32 miles per hour with a minimum 21 miles per hour and a maximum 48 miles. Southbound traffic traveled an average of 33 miles per hour with a minimum of 23 miles per hour and a maximum of 45 miles per hour. Now they, they clocked 200 plus cars. 20 of those cars were doing between 20, were doing between 36 and 48 miles an hour. So that's 20 out of the whole step. So what we're finding is, and what I discussed with the engineer, I think the perception of the, of the cars being so close to the sidewalk and the motors, it's... It seems worse than it is. It, well, the data is showing us what, what the speeds are. 
We also um, have now, the police department has a device where we're <coughs> able to, not to put you out of business, Scott, <laughs> but we're able to uh, collect data from speed and uh, collect data from how many cars are traveling all the way away. And we were able to do that, and we have that now in one of our officers, his father actually wrote a program for that device. So we have that, and it's like the seven or eight thousand dollar piece of equipment that we got. So we're going to continue our enforcement with your, with your group because um, I do have people calling me on a regular basis about, uh, about your group. We're going to stay on top of it, but I just wanted to give you some data of what the engineer found out. And I wanted to keep you some info as it goes through that.
So we applied. Of course, and I thought for sure we were going to get them. And I even met with the Addict and Traffic Enforcement people to get to know this program before it even got here. But then the state said, well, you have to have 50,000 population, a minimum of 50,000 population. So I counteracted and said, well, we have that plus coming through Jacobtown on Europe Road 24 hours a day. That doesn't matter. We have to have, now we have to have 20,000 minimum population in Jacobtown proper. 20 residents, not traffic. And you have to be an accredited agency. And we don't meet the population. Uh, we don't meet the population, which is, I think is ridiculous. I think it's totally political. And I think the state police are trying to limit who has the cameras and who doesn't. Because I think that um, your career in West and your degree would certainly would um, justify a camera. And I've been to, to the Carter and, um, and to their hands are tied as well, because um, we, we tried. We investigated that from the word go when, those, when that camera program first came out. <coughs> I think I mean, we've talked about it before. I'd like to keep up the, the effort, though, and the pressure. And yeah. I want to accept that because I don't think that's fair. So I think, it's, I think it's totally we, we talked about um, you know partnering with our electeds um, and putting some pressure on. And I'd like to see you continue to ask the question. You know, can we have them? Why not? Right. Just so and, that, and also, Councillor, also um, the state had to have noticed our aggressive enforcement with traffic in Jacobtown because they took away our grant and they gave it to the department that needed more. Right. And when I inquired about that, they said it's because our traffic accident data is not too low. Well. So they actually punished us for doing a good job. And we're trying to get that back as well. It was a minimal, it was a nominal, nominal amount, only 5,000 bucks. It was still something that we put guys out on traffic details every day. <coughs> but we didn't stop doing the traffic details because we lost the grant. We still do the traffic details. And George let me know that at the end of the budget. Anything else? Chief, uh, may I? Uh, Question? No? Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Oh, uh, let's see. Fire, fire here? We're all good. I like your <laughs> <laughs> Independent. Uh, my department reports include the Tribune of Dropbox. Other than that, I have nothing else. Second warmers? No? We do not receive a current report. <laughs> sure. <Should I, coughs> I just put out the, the annual report for the fire department in the Dropbox right now. <coughs> okay, new business. Item first, fire department training assessment draft project report. Mr. Manager. Mr. Chairman, that report has been finalized. The company president that prepared it has been out of town for a couple weeks, but I've been speaking with his assistant, Bob Drennan, who uh, said that the notes, the final notes, have been added to the report, and we're expecting a final copy to be delivered when it gets back in the town. Anybody have any questions about that? Next, fire marshal, part-time. And a copy of the advertising in the Dropbox. One note from Bob Brown that EFS IS needs to be addressed. I'm sorry, I, I missed the last sentence. Uh, there's one note left from Bob Brown of VF. VFIS. That needs to be addressed. Yes, sir. M Mr. Chairman, I was going to bring this back to the fire commission meeting. Uh, the chiefs had looked at this job posting. We worked on it here at the borough. I had our building department look at it, and then we turned it over to VFIS, who had just done the training assessment. And asked for their, well, they offered their assistance on it. They uh, they made several comments 
that were cleaned up in this. The ad looks like it's ready to go. They had one comment left to discuss that you could, uh, it's highlighted in blue. And would you like me to speak to that? Please. His recommendation, sir, was that um, if, there, if we're going to have this, this position responding to fire alarms or emergency calls, uh, that the, he wanted to know if the borough was going to provide a vehicle. And he said if the man is in his private vehicle, he shouldn't be responding to emergency calls. And that was one thing he wanted to have flushed out. The only other comment that he had, we budgeted eight hours a week, and we had discussed that with him during the training process. He thinks that it would take 12 hours a week minimum, but he realizes that we, we want to, we're just starting out with this position, and this is what we budgeted for it. So he said it would be difficult, but it could be done. Anything else in that Fire Commission is going to meet on February the 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Pioneer. Please staffing, I believe we addressed that already, Chief. Do we need to do anything else? We took care of that business, Mr. Chairman. Okay, number five, report and scheduled mediation. Um, we had a mediation scheduled uh, between two residents in the borough. Um, it, both parties canceled uh, the mediation. Um, however, I did meet with both parties separately in, in my office to discuss possible resolutions and some um, <coughs> points of, of, of concern. I think it was fruitless. I think so. I think they both both parties have a stand, and um, the only thing I requested from both parties is if there's a, a problem that you're having, we would appreciate you calling the police department and not addressing it face to face. And I, I told both parties that both parties agreed to do that. So as far as I know, from the last meeting that we had. I have, we haven't gotten any calls. Okay. Suppose that's good. All right. Uh, York Road Traffic Study Enforcement. Let me talk about that before you anything else to set on this. <coughs> um, I don't have anything else to say. Okay. <coughs> Seven. Lighting Consortium Disbanded. How we temporarily reduce and Higgins Higgin signalization we're working. That we can township on agreement, and I understand that there's a plan to present something to admin and finance this month. Is that right, Mr. Manager? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. I, I met with Abington uh, yesterday. They, yeah, yesterday. And they have a proposal for us. We went with Higgins Signalization. The, the, the Lighting Consortium had decided to dissolve itself. Huh. Uh, Upper Moreland had run it. They, they took on one of the employees, the other employee got hired by Ambler, and they basically said no more emergency service, no more weekend service. Uh, they gave us a couple weeks notice. Upper Moreland and Cheltenham put out the quotes. Their lowest quote came back from Higgins Signalization. It was $70 an hour uh, rate, and we had been paying 94 with the traffic consortium. So it was less money. We, we, they had investigated the company. They had, they responded to the accident down there by the train station. They did quite well. Uh, in the meantime, Abington had came up with a plan. I had proposed to them three years ago that they weren't interested in, in helping us by taking care of our lights and we pay them to do it instead of consortium. Uh, they have talked about it and they have proposed to take over our traffic lights, the, the, the maintenance, and bill accordingly. Uh, and they're talking in the $60 uh, range, and they're going to come up with a solid number for us. We have several intersections where we share lights with them, where there's a cost share, like Township Line and um, Washington. 
for some reason it's split up in thirds. Cheltenham's a third, we're a third, there's four corners. I never, I don't know why, but it is, it's split up in thirds. So if something happens out there, we all pay a third. To, we have been paying a third. Uh, we would still pay a third on intersections like that. If they're talking about just charging us directly for doing the ones through North Road or Walnut. Uh, it, it's a great opportunity. Uh, with the LED pro, they've also offered to take over our street light maintenance because it'll be so low with the LED. The LED uh, procurement is saying we're not gonna have hardly any maintenance for 10 years. Uh, we have a guarantee on the bulbs for 10 years. And they, that, their whole program is based off, and actually I think they said 20 years, but uh, seven or eight years is when it's paid off uh, through the, the program. So it, it's a great opportunity. Um, very confident in the workers that they have. They're qualified, certified people, and I think that they, they would be, there's no concern about being overfilled or somebody taking their time on the job with these guys. They're uh, very professional. Pretty much. Yeah. So Chief nice. Lynch is actually the man that does it for everything. So he would be doing that. Yeah, just my experience with the consortium was exactly that. Efficiencies, um, inconsistencies of the work, and then the premium cost. So I think I think a change is a good a good thing. So it, it evolved over time to not be as useful as it was in the beginning. They just it grew so big, and only had two employees. Uh, I forget the amount of intersections. I think I, I heard numbers like two forty five, but it, they may have been the more that they were taking care of. So. They, they were overstretched. They had a guy leave and they didn't replace him. And, and it was a lot to take on for Upper Mormon to manage that program. I mean, they, had to, they were actually their employees, you know? So they had to manage the entire program. They had the employees taking the calls. They didn't, they didn't have a, you know, a, a dispatch mm -hmm. to take care of. So you didn't call somebody on yourself. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a, a great opportunity for us and the, the cost savings. So they're putting everything in writing, and I'm going to bring it before that, and find it's helpful. Anybody else? I spoke to a resident today on Sunni Street who wanted to look into the idea of, t in a, of a pathway to improving the parking situation by creating lines on the street. That was the thing that they asked for, so I told them that I would bring it to the group. Um, and so I don't know what the pathway is to looking into that as an option. They thought that. Um, I think that they weren't given, the, we, weren't, we didn't put the lines in originally because we wanted to get, we felt we could get more spots into a block if we gave, if there wasn't like that kind of rigidity about the length of a parking spot. So they thought it might actually create more organization on the block if there were lines. So for the good of the order, I think that it's something that perhaps in a future date we should talk about if there's a possibility for us to create, um, you know, just more defined order on Cedar Street so we get some concerns about parking. Okay, hey, well, next is old business. Can you believe we talked about the timing of the traffic light at Greenwood? Is there anything else in that? No, Mr. Chair, I don't have anything else. Cool enough. Okay, accessible walkway playground update. Understand phase one is complete except the handrails are waiting for delivery. Um, okay, let's see. Town Square completed. Understand? Rules and safety lights, I understand there's still something going on there. Mr. Manager? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, the poles have been spotted, which means they've located where they're going to install them. Now they're just waiting for them to be delivered, and they will be installed. Great. Mm -hmm. Good. The, uh, I understand the traffic engineer is speaking to PennDOT about concern, resident concerns of Walnut Street. Yes, sir, Mr. Mr. Chair. They, that and the planners, they've approached PennDOT about both of them. The original concerns on Walnut Street were uh, addressed. Pannoni put a plan together, submitted it, and PennDOT accepted it. And in the springtime, they're going to come out and restrike that, restrike and sign that street uh, between Rodman and Run at the bridge. The, the concerns this is speaking about was there was a resident that came in after that 
there was like a stop sign at Rodman and um, some other ideas that he had and we provided them to our traffic engineer and he's discussing with PennDOT but he has not gotten back to us <coughs> on that or the planners yet. That has been an ongoing problem for some time. That's from my neighborhood and that's bad. bad area. Does anybody else have anything to update? Greenwood Avenue School Safety Zone update. Understand the project is approved. When do we, when do we expect to hear from PennDOT? Mr. Chair, that, that project was approved and PennDOT is reviewing the official plan now. Okay. Uh, I haven't been given a date, but they know it's a priority to us to get it up. But I don't have a date for you. All right. And I understand the Walnut Street safety submittal is approved and going to take place in 2017 sometime. We have that scheduled yet? No, they just said the springtime was 17. Right. And then there's a striping on 300 block of Florence Avenue for the playground. <coughs> yes, well, Mr. Chair, we spoke about that last month. The engineer came in with a plan uh, with a couple of different options. From what I understand, the comments from the committee went back to him, and I haven't been given an update on that. Okay. Uh, let's see, also we have a striking ones. Uh, police car release program. Is that going to be before Yes, Mr. Chair, that, that was on, it originally came through because the police are on your public safety agenda, and then it was recommended <coughs> to go to admin and finance to be reviewed and discussed uh, because it's budgetary. Right. And finally, the status of PD request Change the language in Borough Code 4 A to match accreditation standard. I understand the solicitors involved in this. Mr. Chair, uh, the solicitor said he does have this, but we haven't seen it come back to the board for adoption for several months now. So we, this, the accreditation standard says one thing, our Borough Code says another thing about the organization of the police department, and they both have to mesh for our assessment. So I'm kind of concerned about where, where this is. Mr. Mr. Manager, could you give perhaps the uh, solicitor where that might be? Yes, sir. Does anybody have anything else for me? Yes, sir. I just have one last thing. Um, from just reading the stuff in Dropbox, it appears one of uh, the police force received accommodation from the FBI sign. He's not allowed to release that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I speak to that? Yes, please. Wait, give a second. Can we get another minute, Mr. Chairman? Yes, We're very proud of that. Um, our, the Royal Bank, back in 2010, was held up, and two hostages were taken. They were released shortly after the robbery. However, the case went very cold very quickly. Um, Jake County Police collected evidence from the street that seemed to be a dead end. So we had a detective, he retired, we appointed a new detective who that was what he, what he wanted to open up right away. He wanted to work on that case and uh, he asked me if he could do it. I, I, I said yes, of course. Um, I limited his time, uh, his overtime. But when I saw the progress he was making in very short order, he brings in a piece of evidence and asks me if I could send it off for DNA testing, which we did. And the DNA testing came back to match several other municipalities, <coughs> robberies, bank robberies as well. And um, anyway, it, it was a joint effort by several departments, but the FBI recognized Mark for his diligence and his staying on this thing and opening up and we were very proud of that and um, as a matter of fact he's the, 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 he's had his court case and he's now in prison for, for 30 plus 30 to 40 years mm -hmm. oh. he was responsible for over 18 bank robberies um, in the region wow and, and you saw
saw, uh, and I, I, I recommend, I asked the both new counselors to, uh, to tour the police station and do ride-alongs, and Ann took me up on that last yeah. week, and uh, that was the guy who saw me in the technical. Yeah, yeah, very technical. So we're glad that she she took us up on that offer to tour and to do the ride along, and I hope Miss uh, Councilor Ruger does the same, and anybody else is welcome. Yes, so am I. So, but we're very proud of that. <coughs> you gave, you gave the dinner. No, that's great. That's yeah. good. So it was it was very uh, <coughs> we're very proud of that. That's very nice. a lot of work on it. That's one of the small things. That's very good. Is there anything else? Right now? Um, George, can you just keep me in the loop on the Florence Avenue, um, the striping, when, when you yes. do hear something? Yes, I will. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Once, twice, I'll look. 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 I'll